Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. Uh, in this video I'm going to do some water test in front of you why I'm talking about what I wanted to talk about. Uh, I just did some videos as you know why they can't seem to get the nitrogen cycle correctly and I just got a notice of a brand new video that's been put out uh, by Marine Depot and it's for beginners it's a beginner kind of video in this video he talks about the nitrogen cycle and he does a very good job on representing the cycle how it's being done but he starts getting confusing on his wording at the very end of the video he does admit that he's a teacher he's not a microbiologist or a chemist so he's uh, doing his best on the whole thing but the point I'm bringing up is that when I did the videos of the nitrogen cycle why is it that people just don't seem to get it right is because of the misunderstanding of words and bacteria and how they're worded and the different uh, genesis of bacteria that are and classes of bacteria used to complete the nitrogen cycle. He does admit to the one way of the nitrogen cycle that people have used, of course, is that water changes and through plants. And then when you get rid of the plants, you get rid of the nitrates, okay? But he, but he even admits that is not the full nitrogen cycle. Now, he goes into it that the one thing he says that's completely wrong, he says uh, anaerobic means low oxygen, and that's not correct. Anaerobic does not mean low oxygen. It means that you are void of oxygen. It means no oxygen. Anaerobic meaning no oxygen. So when we talk about bacteria that live in anaerobic zones, we are talking about assimilatory denitrification. And all that does is take nitrates and break it down back into ammonia, which is a more toxic than nitrates. Okay. But he tells everybody that anaerobic means low oxygen. Low oxygen is anoxic zones between two parts per million to 0.5 parts per million and anoxic zones is dissimilative denitrification takes place is what he wanted to say but he called it an anaerobic a lot of people don't understand that in the anoxic zone is where the nitrogen cycle is completed in its fullest where nitrates are converted into N2 denitrogen which is gassed off into the atmosphere which is 78 percent nitrogen. Why this is still getting wrong or why people are saying that anaerobic means low oxygen it's I, I understand it probably gets confusing because of how the names of bacteria have been named like for example the factutative bacteria is called anaerobic hetatrophic factutative bacteria. It's only classified as anaerobic because it has the ability to live in oxygen-free zones. Okay, like I explained. It's almost, I don't know, maybe it's just me. It's almost like people are scared to say anoxic, meaning low oxygen like hypoxy for for the medical term and they seem to keep saying anaerobic means low oxygen and I think people are getting this all messed up and this is the reason why they become so resistant to the fact when you try to explain to them about a plenum for example or the BCB basket is because they keep confusing anaerobic with anoxic and 
this confusion, I think, is what's setting the hobbyists back in thinking that this zone will take care of the nitrogen cycle and finish the nitrogen cycle, as I have explained it, and he said the nitrogen cycle needs to be completed. What they don't understand is because of this confusion of anaerobic only meaning void of oxygen or oxygen levels do not exist in those zones, okay, these zones, once they have any oxygen injected into them or brought into them, these bacteria die. They cannot live with oxygen in their environment. Oxygen is presented to them some way where if you stir up your gravel, your substrate, oxygen hits it, it dies. And in fact, I've talked about that in my other videos where people have tried to use different things, plants, fauna, anything to get into the substrate and try to keep it open so oxygenated water can get into the substrate so it does not create these anaerobic zones. This gets confusing and you know this is the 21st century where we, th we think to ourselves why is this still being taught this way when we know and if you have watched my videos which people if you have watched my videos you know that I have tried to teach you what exactly happens in these different zones and what zones you are trying to create in your aquarium to finish the nitrogen cycle or what are you trying to create inside of a BCB basket to finish the nitrogen cycle as we know it without doing as he stated in early in this thing water changes and depending on plants to take in the nitrates and then we get rid of the plants to lessen up our nitrates. We on the other hand, the freshwater people, we don't use refrugums where we have just plants that will take up nitrates. A lot of people in freshwater barely have any plants at all. And 80% of the hobbyists basically gear their tanks towards fish and not plants. So that, that's a big percentage that we have to deal with. So we now have to think a little different than a saltwater aquarium because we are incorporating everything either into our filters or into our substrate and we have to do it right. There was a fellow that contacted me by email and he made a statement that he's been in the hobby for like 60 plus years. He got it from his dad. He also made the statement that uh, a long time ago they used to use the under gravel filters. They had the small little lift tube. His dad showed how to make the bubbles just right in these lift tubes. That's all the amount of air you need going through them. And he said he had no problem with those aquariums when he did them that way. And like I said, a long time ago, that's the way they ran aquariums. And they did make an anoxic zone, not knowing exactly that they were fulfilling the complete nitrogen cycle. That's why you'll see so many old timers, they write me and say, you know, I remember doing that and I didn't have all the problems and all I did was water changes for years. You know, I, I didn't bother with my aquariums like I do now. And... You know, a light goes on to their in their head that, that says, wow, you were right. We were doing that, but we changed it and start adding more and more oxygen to the substrate, which means that this became a uh, aerobic oxygen requirement for uh, obligated uh, aerobes to live in only because there was just so much oxygen in there we were trying to replicate the sewage treatment plants and you watch my videos I won't get into that of uh, 
of how that really came about and how it worked. But we have to understand that when we talk about certain bacteria, they maybe have been classed as anaerobic only because of their ability to live in both situations of free, oxygen-free zone and zones that have oxygen. But basically, what we're trying to do is create anoxic zones and our substrate and our aquarium. The tests I'm doing in front of you are showing my aquarium. I do, I'm going to say a 5 or 10 gallon water change once a week. And that's about it. That's all I do. I'm being honest with you. I don't pick up dead leaves if they're floating. I'll, I'll take them out. But I really don't clean the substrate or anything like that. And as you can see, the phosphates are down to, what, 0 0.06 parts per million. That's, uh, that's very, very low. And right now I'm tech testing the nitrates with the API test kit. And you'll see when I'm done with it, I take it to a window which has good lighting so I can see it. And it came out to about five parts per million. Okay, not dead, not zero. But we, I can't really say, is this exact, this test I'm doing on the nitrates? If this was a Lamont test kit, I would say, yeah, because Lamonts are very accurate. So this could be off a little bit, you know. But for the sake of argument, I looked at it. I like to look at my stuff outside versus inside because lighting can change the way your test kits read. Your uh, incandescent lights, fluorescent lighting, LED lighting, depending on what the temperature is. Is it, is it daylight? Is it bright white? Is it soft white, these can all change the way that vial looks. So I like going outside or putting it by a window that has a nice bright sunlight so I can look at the vial and then compare it to the chart and see exactly as close as I can how to read that vial in daylight versus trying to do it with artificial light. So that's what I'm doing here. But I wanted to bring this up because a lot of these videos, I understand, do not appeal to some of the hobbyists that made comments that it takes too long or they, uh, to try to understand. It gets too complicated. Some people like it. Other people do not. They, they want things to be very simplified. And when some people do simplify something sometimes they get it wrong and then that knowledge carries on to the next person and they say well no I saw this I believe this guy is reputable I believe what he's saying is reputable I believe this is the way it is you're wrong and this is where we get the clashing between people on forums and stuff like this where you're wrong and I'm right kind of attitude and it, it shouldn't be that way because this hobby, you know, it, it's been around a long time. Longer than I'll be around. And we should be understanding the science behind it. Some people don't care about the science behind it. But I've told you exactly in my previous videos how the nitrogen cycle works. I told you the kind of bacteria we are looking for. Why we are looking for it. What it does if we can get this bacteria to grow in abundance, what it will do. Here's an example of me testing my tank for everybody right in front of you, the water out of the tank. I want to make sure that everybody understands that how it works, that it works for me. I have other people say how it's working for them, that they had troubles before. Once you understand the nitrogen cycle, that it doesn't work in anaerobic zones. It works in anoxic zones to finish the dissimilative denitrification with factutative anaerobes. Then we understand how to complete the nitrogen cycle. But it is incorrect to say that anaerobic means low oxygen. 
no anaerobic means void of oxygen look it up if you don't believe me look up the definition you'll find out the exact definition means to have no oxygen not very little oxygen but no oxygen then look up anoxic now you'll see it means very little oxygen but still has the presence of oxygen so that's exactly what we are trying to achieve in our aquarium and believe it or not it is achievable if you look at the aquarium here you see the black it looks like it's four inches deep but it actually is only three inches deep the substrate is there is one inch of a plenum underneath it and we must understand what the plenum the the thing about it the, the thing about it is when you make a plenum uh, you also have the uh, diffusion and the flux of nutrients are already closely related by redox so in that plenum you still have diffusion happening through the substrate now the plenum have a higher ORP function much more efficiently than live rock believe it or not or sand placed directly on the bottom of an aquarium now that's kind of hard to believe that a plenum like this actually is better than if you had a saltwater tank than live rock and anar putting sand directly on the bottom of your aquarium because we are trying to create diffusion we are trying to move nutrients from one source to another source and there's different ways of doing that and as I found out that doing a slow moving plenum seems to move fluids easier than if we did not have a bubbler or some way of moving the water slowly through there than if we just had no bubbler or something to move the water through and that's why I tell people if you're going to use one with the one inch tube or whatever make the tube short the shorter the tube you don't have that uplift that draft that will cause even more water we don't want to move a lot of water through the substrate because plants don't like a lot of water moving through the substrate to begin with they like slower movement of water and that's what we're trying to create here for our freshwater aquariums versus the salt water they're trying to do something else by using the refrugums and through water changes and other sources of of trying to keep phosphate and nitrates down because this same system is good for salt water but they chose a different path which is fine but uh, for us freshwater people this this is good enough for what we want to use it for because it will do the job to keep our fish alive to keep the tank clean to try to keep algae at bay uh, so we don't have to do a lot of water changes we can we can try to keep measuring things like you just saw my test kits phosphates at point uh, zero six nitrates at uh, five parts per million that's great that's that's nothing I would complain about for a freshwater aquarium and we don't have to worry about whether you're going to be so scared of as we know frightened to death whether or not we're going to put too much food in to feed our fish as we've seen on other videos where people put their substrate at the bottom uh, we've seen it we, they barely feed their fish or they feed their fish every other day because they're so scared of adding phosphates and nitrates to the system to cause an algae problem when if you're watching my channel you realize this can be solved there is a solution but you have to understand the nitrogen cycle and then apply the solution of which I'm giving you once you understand that 
then you won't have the troubles as other hobbies are showing that they, they have a real nice beautiful aquarium and they barely have any fish in it. You know, that's the way it is because they realize too many fish means you're going to have to feed more. If you feed more, means more nitrates, more phosphates are going in the system and the system can't handle it. So the system then starts collapsing. And this is what's happened to our hobby now is we've made it so tough for new people and individuals to be successful when it shouldn't be this way. It should be a piece of cake. It should be easy. We should all be successful. And that's what I'm trying to do these videos for you. So you can be successful. Whether or not you want to listen to me or not, that's totally up to you. You can go with the next guy. But I did want to bring this up because new videos are being made. They're still getting it wrong. They're still not understanding the bacteria and the way the nitrogen cycle is, goes down. I guess you could just say that. Anyhow, this is Dr. Novak. Uh, thank you for watching. Until next time, I hope your aquariums do great.